As I mentioned earlier, ADLS is intended to work with Hadoop-compatible software. The best choice for that in Azure is Databricks, which is a managed Spark service. Even though Spark and ADLS are compatible, you still need to perform some security-related steps before you can use them together. There are three different ways to authenticate Databricks to ADLS. The easiest way is called Credential Pass-Through. It lets you use your own Azure Active Directory credentials to access ADLS. The next way is to use a service principle. That's essentially an identity that you assign to a service. Then you give that identity access to ADLS. The third method is to embed the storage account access key in your Spark code on Databricks. This is not recommended because it's a security risk to have an account key in plain text in your code. I'm going to show you the credential pass-through method because it's simple and secure. However, I should point out that there is a disadvantage with this method. It only works on a premium Databricks workspace, which can be significantly more expensive. First, we'll create an Azure Databricks workspace. Then we'll spin up a Spark cluster and create a notebook. Finally, we'll access our ADLS file system from the notebook. OK, type Databricks in the search bar. There it is. Click Add. Call it Databricks 1. For the resource group, use the one you created before. For the pricing tier, choose Premium. As I mentioned, this is required for using credential pass-through. Then click the Create button. It'll take a few minutes, so I'll fast forward. All right, it's finished. Click Refresh to see your new workspace. Then click on it. And click Launch Workspace. Now we can create a cluster. Click Clusters and Create Cluster. It seems to be stuck, so I'm going to click Refresh again. OK, call it Cluster 1. Leave the cluster mode on standard. Make sure the Terminate After 120 Minutes of Inactivity box is checked so it won't cost you much if you forget to shut the cluster down when you're done with it. You can even change it to a lower number of minutes if you want. Then click Advanced Options and check the Enable Credential Pass-Through box. Now it says that only a single user, me in this case, is allowed to run commands on this cluster. That's because I selected Standard for the cluster mode. If I had selected high concurrency, then it would have enabled credential pass-through for every user on this cluster. OK, now we can click Create Cluster. While it's spinning up, we can create a notebook. Click Workspace, and then in the drop-down, select Create Notebook. Call it Notebook 1. I'm really creative with my names, aren't I? Set the language to Python. The cluster should be set to the cluster you just created. It looks like the cluster is still spinning up, but let's see if we can access our file system using an ls command. To use a file system command, we need to start it with %fs, then ls. Now we have to refer to our file system with a URL that starts with ABFSS, which stands for Azure Blob File System Secure. Then colon, slash, slash, the name of the file system, which is Data Lake in our case, at, the name of the storage account, which is CA Data Lake Gen 2 for me, but it will be different for you. Then, .dfs.core.windows.net. 
To execute the command, use Shift Enter. It might take a little while for it to connect to the cluster and run for this first command. There, it worked. There's the file we uploaded earlier. I'll zoom in a bit. That's a pretty cumbersome way to refer to our file system, though. So let's mount it on this cluster to make it easier. Copy and paste these lines into the notebook. Change the storage account name here to your own. It worked. Now we can refer to the file system as slash mnt slash data lake. Before we move on to the next lesson, I'll give you a quick outline of how you would authenticate using a service principle instead of credential pass-through. First, create a service principle by registering an app in Azure Active Directory. The app in this case means your Databricks instance. Then go to your file system and assign the storage blob data contributor role to the service principle. Next, create a secret in an Azure Key Vault that the service principal can use to authenticate. Then in your Databricks workspace, create an Azure Key Vault-backed secret scope. Finally, run a much more complicated version of the mountain code I showed you earlier. This code includes the service principal ID, the names of the secret scope and secret, and the Azure AD tenant ID. Can you see why I used credential pass-through instead? That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, you'll see how to do some simple data analysis.